Okay, we're doing it. The design portfolio, AKA the personal website. And I'm going to attempt to build two versions of my portfolio site in both Framer and Webflow to see which one makes the cut and which one I will ultimately choose to use. There are three things that are important to me going into this. Number one, I need to spend as little time as possible to build it. Number two, poppiness. So whether that's something flashy or exciting. And number three, flexibility. It needs to be able to do more than display work, but drive action, be it inquiries or the ability to sell some products. So for this challenge, I'm gonna create two different versions of the landing page. We are gonna have a green version, which we're gonna build in Framer, and an orange version that we are gonna build in Webflow. And I spent a bit of time working on the Figma file, getting it all ready for auto layout, so then we can then use each of the respective plugins to copy and paste into both of the website builders. So let's jump into Framer and start building the first version. So we've got the plugin up for Framer and in theory we should be able to just run the plugin on the Figma auto layout and copy and paste it into Framer and give ourselves a solid starting point to work with. So we've just run the plugin and it's actually done quite a good job of getting the design into Framer. So much so that I'm kind of getting confused between Figma and Framer which app I'm in. But first thing that I've noticed is uh, the breakpoints are a really key piece here. I actually like the way it shows you the breakpoints side by side. However, there is a little bit of a, a thing going on here with the responsiveness. Um, I feel like I need to make everything 100% width and this is where kind of understanding web principles comes in a little bit but the breakpoints are jumping between the, each other quite um, drastically and I think that's because the auto layout plugin hasn't quite nailed um, the transition into Framer but it's nothing that we can't solve with some 100% widths etc etc. So we've added a nav, we've basically built the main layout of the top section of the page and I've even gone as far as working on the CMS, pulling in some of the items into the home page and trying out a little hover effect to preview the work on rollover. And it's all working pretty good, um, being able to do this quite fast, which is great. The other thing that's kind of cool is if you press this little play button right here, apparently this is the preview of the actual site and really what the actual site would look like, I imagine if we press publish, if we go into full screen mode here, you can see that this is now feeling and looking responsive. So I think this has done a pretty good job. So also a really cool tip is to use the Reloom library. Now this works with both Webflow and Framer, but essentially the Reloom library gives you a bunch of ready-made components that you can use in Figma, all auto layout ready, and you could literally style those with a style guideline, stick that on it, and then you would pretty much have a page which looks and feels like the website that you would want. So when you copy and paste that into each of the uh, web building apps then you should actually be at least halfway there so that's really cool I love the reloom library so who is Framer for? I would say Framer is a pretty good starting point for anyone who's a beginner or relatively new to building websites. Like it has a lot of the things straight out the box and its similarity to Figma will make it really, really familiar. So I think this is a great starting point. Um, the animations and stuff are relatively easy to achieve, albeit the whole thing feels a little bit, in my view, stripped back and less professional. Like I don't feel like I'm actually building a website and to the point where I actually think it's only a matter of time before Figma just swallow this in and you can actually just press play on a Figma file and then you'll end up with a website. Overall, I think it's a great option for a beginner, but it does feel like it lacks some of the functionality that I would want, certainly in the kind of product sections and anything to do with e-commerce. Although there are obviously ways that we could do that through kind of hyperlinks to Stripe products, etc. So other features, when it comes to the CMS, yes, there is a CMS, there is ability to have multiple pages and this works relatively well and as expected. I don't think there's too much cleverness going on here. I don't feel like it quite has the level of flexibility that I need, but it will certainly do the job. What I do really like about Framer is the ability to see multiple breakpoints next to each other. It's good to see how this thing will respond and that kind of overview part of Figma, which you get within Framer is something that I do really think is cool. So I'm gonna try and take the header 
section from Figma and see what it feels like to go straight into Webflow from Figma. So we are literally jumped into Figma here and we are copying the component using the Figma to Webflow plugin. And we are literally just gonna paste it straight in here and see how it uh, performs. So it looks like it's done a pretty good job. Um, just a little bit of tidying up on the padding and the margin and yeah this is this is this is pretty good i'm just going to clean up the styles here and then check the mobile responsiveness out and give that a little bit of a clean up so now we can go ahead and publish this and then we can check it out on the phone and yeah as you can see um so yeah just needs a little bit of work and it's all good to use Webflow, you really need to understand some of the basic foundational principles of web design, such as Flexbox and Grid. But that being said, if you've been working more recently in Figma, the concepts of stacks, auto layout and Flexbox do translate quite well into Webflow. And yes, there is a steeper learning curve and you probably won't go from first exposure to Webflow to a finished portfolio site in a few hours like with Framer, but what it does do is give you some other fantastic flexible options. That being said, Webflow is, I would say, for an intermediate and up. So one of the things that I love to do when I'm designing is use some of the tools that are available out there to get a fast track. And one particular resource I like in general is a guy called Timothy Ricks. He has this framework called Lumos, which is both a Figma file and a style guide in Webflow. And you can literally download that thing and apply your fonts to the style guide and it will update everything, literally both in the Figma file, but also you can then take that into Webflow. And in theory, like with Framer, you should be able to do that in Figma and then use the Figma to Webflow plugin to copy and paste all of those components. There are thousands of templates in the Webflow community. Lots of people have given the workout for free. So there is literally a free starting block for you to go and build a website from. So what I like about Webflow as someone who's had quite a bit of exposure to it is the flexibility of being able to build. You can literally build really high-end websites that have a lot of functionality. Like we're talking, pro level apps are possible with Webflow. We've used Webflow for some of our projects for our business, Reboxed, and we've literally built a full on app using Wisdom Webflow. I love it for its ability to really push the levels of what is possible with web development without writing lines of code or some lines of code. If you're looking to do something sexy and slick in Webflow, it's completely possible. And the interactions, while a little bit fiddly, do give you some incredible options for making that ish pop. The thing I like the most about Webflow is its expandability. For me, building a website is not just about a couple of landing pages and maybe a blog. It's about what's coming in the future. So if I want to start building things like courses or paid memberships or paid communities, all of those things can be done with Webflow. And I think as a designer in the modern era, having that flexibility to productize yourself on a platform like Webflow makes it the number one choice for me and why I'll be using it for my website.